I was just using this bench as a hurdle to get some exercise. A hurdle reminds me, do you know what a hurdle is? A hurdle starts out as a hurt, and it'll stay a hurt if you let it. It'll get you down and it'll make you sad. But a hurt becomes a hurdle when it causes you to lift up and rise higher than you've ever been before. But do you know what makes a hurt turn into a hurdle? It's by filling up on God's Word and allowing Jesus to turn your sads into glads, your tragedies into triumphs, your disappointments. Sometimes when you least expect it, a hurt will trip you up to try to get you down. But God's Word can raise you up. Because of Jesus, the very hurts that hurt you can be your hurdles. Determine to go forward according to God's Word. Give thanks that Jesus is in His Word and He will lift you up. Because of Jesus, you can enjoy the atmosphere of higher living. Just keep moving forward, holding fast to God's Word. Cause hurts can be hurdles. Oh Tracy, my new pet ducks have the softest down. Down, that's what their baby feathers are called. I like their names. I call them... Mindy was expecting a pleasant conversation with a friend to tell her about her new pets. But instead, Mindy's friend makes fun of her. How dumb! That's really dumb! Dumb, dumb, dumb! Mindy's feelings are badly hurt. What is she going to do? Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to sit and eat worms. Mindy, you shouldn't get down in the dumps. I never liked worms anyway. And besides, why agree with her when I can get even? You can forgive her and return good for evil. Forgive her? But, but did you hear what she said? Perhaps it would help if you could hear what she was really saying. At normal speed, it may have sounded like... Dumb, dumb, dumb. But now listen very carefully to this replay in slow motion and you'll hear some things that perhaps at normal speed go by so fast you don't have a chance to understand them. Dumb! I'm so unhappy with myself, I'm trying to make other people unhappy too. Dumb! I don't even like myself, so how can I like anyone else? Dumb! I want someone else to feel as bad as I do. I didn't know she was trying to hurt my feelings because down deep, she's really hurting. I know I should forgive her, I just wish I felt more forgiving. When you open your heart to God's forgiveness and take that first step of forgiveness and faith, Jesus will cause your heart to do what your head already knows to do. Okay, here goes. Hello? Hi, Tracy. You want to come over and watch the rest of the filling station with me? You mean what I said? Did it drive you crazy? It didn't drive me anywhere because I've got transportation to higher ground. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, I really do forgive you. I really do. It's time for 
one of my favorite parts. You reap what you sow. When you throw mud, you get dirty. When you give out flowers, this song for this important announcement. Giving flowers is an expression that means doing nice things for someone. When you give flowers to those who hurt you, you are planting seeds for God's love to grow in you. present the first episode of the Doggedly Dogs. Among the good neighbours of Persistent Place, we find the home of Doggedly Muffin Dog and Doggedly Spotty Dog. In their doghouse, Sweet Doghouse, we find Doggedly Muffin Dog and Doggedly Spotty Dog making plans for their evening. Muffin, dog tired, dreams of spending a sleepy evening on the couch with a dog-eared book. Spotty dreams of how relaxing it would be to spend the evening playing her favorite dog tunes on the piano. But these dogs know that there are chores to be done. Will they decide to ignore every chore they consider a bore? Or will they decide Relaxing can come when the work is all done. They choose to get busy picking up toys and sharing their responsibilities of washing the dishes and drying them. Why are they working so doggedly to complete their tasks? By the way, doggedly means persistent and never quitting. Because... We're the doggedly dogs! Let this story remind you that when you have something to do, do it doggedly. If someone has hurt you, then you do have something to do doggedly. And that is to love and to forgive those who have hurt you. Do nice things for them. Say nice things about them. Pray for them. Thank Jesus for turning your hurts into hurdles. You'll be so glad you decided to love and to forgive. Especially when you read Matthew 6.14. Let's fill up on Matthew 6.14. If ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. When I forgive others with my heart, it's easy to believe God can forgive me because His heart is bigger. <laughs> I'm Schaefer. I'm Parker. 
We're a couple of pen pals who want to help you to learn today's memory verse. Matthew 6, 14. The best way to recognize it is to say, say it, it, read it, it write it, it, memorize it. it. We're writing the verse for you, but we're leaving out one word and we want you to fill in the blank. Are you ready, little Schaefer? Ready, Parker. Right on. Now listen and decide if you have an inkling of the word that goes where I say blank. If ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also blank you. Do you know what word is missing? It's forgive. Matthew 6, 14 says, If ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Wait a minute, Parker. Next to the verse we've written, there seems to be some ink blots on the page. Those aren't just any ink blots. They're the filling station's favorite vocalists ready to sing our memory verse. So let's hear it from the ink blots. If ye forgive men their trespasses, your So forgive you. Matthew six fourteen. I'm wearing this headpiece to remind us to be humble bees. Humble bees want God's way, not our own way. Of course, it's easy to wear these on the outside, but what's important is whether. I remember to be humble on the inside, even if I don't have on a costume. These peanuts are really good. Can I have some? Get your own peanuts. See what I mean? We all know it's selfish not to share. Humble bees should share, but even in sharing, we can miss the humble way if the sharing isn't from the heart. These peanuts are great. Can I have some? Okay, I'll share. Half and half. Hey, you got the peanuts and I got the shells. It's still 50-50. Even if your head says 50-50, it's not the humble way if your heart is not in it. Can I have some peanuts? please. Okay, you're being polite and I'm my usual mean self. You can have them all. I don't serve them anyway. Even giving all you have is a big nothing without love. Trying to be nice to someone else to punish yourself is not being nice at all. This time, would you all just lean into your TV sets and say hum as a reminder to be humble bees on the inside. You know, these peanuts are really good. I wanted to share them with you. Well, thanks, Mindy. You know they do taste better when we enjoy them together. And now, humblebees, consider this story from Laurel with a Moral. If you tell me in a story, if you tell me in a rhyme, I'll listen to the lesson and we'll have a very good time. So sit right down and rest yourself as comfy as you can. Get your favorite teddy bear or hold your favorite can. Cause here comes Laurel with a Moral. There's a famous pig you've heard of, no doubt and you'd recognize her famous pig snout. But have you heard of Pig Susie? She too is a doozy. 
And that's who this story's about. She's a piggy so plump and so round, and she makes the cutest little pig snorting sound. When her talents were discovered, the talent scouts hovered to make her the new toast of the town. They promised to make her a star. On the screen, they said, you'll go far. But she said, well, I'm a pig. How can I make it big? They said, we'll just change how you are. We'll start by changing your name. We'll call you Madame LaFame. A new dress of lace, some rouge on her face. It's true, she didn't look the same. On her head, they placed a blonde wig. How becoming, they said, for a pig. They bedecked her with bows and powdered her nose, gave her shoes for dancing a jig. It was time for her opening premiere, but they couldn't find Pig Sue anywhere. Though they'd changed her nomenclature, they hadn't changed her nature. She was in mud from her toes to her hair. It was hard for the agents to swallow, but a pig would much rather wallow. More than looking so fine, a mud-loving swine cares most for the mud in the hollow. It's just my nature to love dirt, though I was looking so cute and so pert. I really haven't changed when just my outside's rearranged. It's what's inside that determines your worth. To be different, they'd try to teach her. But they'd overlooked her most important feature. From old ways to depart, one needs a new heart. Then one can become a new creature. A changed heart is what really changes us. A changed heart comes from Jesus. Oh, it's not available to the dogs or the pig in the story. But Jesus wants to change your heart. He wants to live in your heart. He wants to clean you up from the inside and make you the kind of person you were meant to be. Jesus specializes in changing unforgiving hearts into forgiving ones and selfish hearts into giving hearts. So hide his word in your heart so you'll not sin against God. When I ordered some plants to pretty up the filling station, my florist sent me over this thorny one. At first I thought, thorns? But then I knew that the florist knew more about plants than what I did. And do you know that it wasn't long before I saw this? Pretty, isn't it? Something beautiful from something thorny. And do you know that that is what God wants to do with our lives? He wants to take the thorns of our lives and make them something beautiful, if we'll only let Him. My florist tells me that we can learn a lot of spiritual lessons by working with plants. You know, I really enjoy working with these pretty flowers. These beautiful ones are my favorites. Oh, there's a bumblebee. He seems to like these flowers too. I'd say he really likes them, wouldn't you? Of course, a little bee on a big flower like this could spend all day eating. I think I'll watch for a while. Hey, where's he going? He was just getting a good start. Oh, what's this? He's coming back. He's going to share his good find with all his friends. You know, I think that little bee has the right idea. If you found good news, share it. If you found it, share it and share it again With a song in your heart and a great big grin If you know him, introduce him to a friend So he can share it then If you found it, share it and share it, share it again With a song in your heart and a great big grin. Great grin. If you know him, introduce him to a friend, friend, so he can share it then. So he can share it then. In Jesus' day, it was the custom of the Jewish parents to take their children to a religious leader, that he might lay his hands on them to pronounce a blessing. 
When the people heard that Jesus was nearby, they began bringing their little ones to him so that he might touch them. When the disciples saw the children, they thought that Jesus was too busy to take time for them. In fact, the disciples considered grown-ups more important. The disciples scolded the parents for bringing the children to Jesus because they thought that the children would be a bother to him. Nothing could have been further from the truth. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Jesus loves boys and girls. He honored those parents just as he honors all parents who bring their children to Jesus because Jesus blesses the little ones. He taught the disciples that children are very important to him. On one occasion, when the disciples were arguing about which one of them was the greatest, Jesus taught what it means to be great. He took a little child into his arms and said, Whoever humbles himself like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever welcomes a little child in my name welcomes me. You see, children have the wonderful ability of believing just what Jesus said. And Jesus said, the greatest work that anyone can do is to believe on him. So, whenever you see a little child, treat him as you would like to treat Jesus. And if you are a child, remember that Jesus loves you and wants you to be the example that will teach people young and old the humble way which leads to the kingdom of heaven.